world and welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those who don't know who I am, my name is James Walling. I'm a music student at the University of Hertfordshire and in this series I'm going to be taking you through my processes writing my first musical as part of my dissertation. So over the past couple of weeks there's been so much growth from not having any songs at all to writing all five to producing all of them and last week starting the process of making it sound as realistic as possible. This week is where we take the next step in making it as realistic as possible and program some of the MIDI. Now, when real, instruments are, real instrumentalists play, that's a tongue twister, uh, there's a lot of imperfections. We play often to the beat one and the three. Uh, you know, we have uh, some people's right hand is stronger than the left, or their right foot is stronger than the left foot, or things like that that have loads of imperfections. And then imperfections are kind of what makes music sound the best it really can be. But the issue with MIDI is that it doesn't have these imperfections. It's often very clear to the beat. It's often very uh, uniform across the whole song. We don't, um, so it sounds quite boring, and quite dull, and quite dry. And programming allows us to bring back some of these imperfections, bring back some of these ra this so-called randomness. And it's a really important process, and it's something that I've spent now. I've done three of the songs. I'm going to take you through another one, the fourth one, uh, and show you some of the ideas that I go through when I program. Um, and yeah, come along and journey with me. So here you can see the logic file for No Strings On Me. Uh, this is the demo that I showed you last time. I've got the beat mapping right there. So I've removed all the audio uh, and we're just sticking with MIDI because that's what we're going to be working with. So here and what we're going to go through are the guitars, the keys, the strings, specifically the cello for this song. We're not going to go over a full song of strings because it does take quite a while. But I'll just show you the general techniques there, the bass and the drums. This is where we're going to start on the drums. The drums are probably most important. Uh, it's also one where pro not programming is most obvious and program is also most obvious. Uh, and so it's where I think it's best to start. It's also the most complex in instrument. So when it comes out to drums, so here we've got this beat. So it's a very simple four to the floor kind of beat. So two things we're going to do here. To start with, we're going to look at. To start with, we're going to look at how a normal drum would play this instrument. So with their right hand, they play the hi hat, which is the thing you see here. With their left, the snare, which is here, and with their foot, the kick. And so the the right hand, the hi hat, is more than likely going to be quite a lot heavier then the hits to the snare and the kick. So the kick is the most important and I often like to turn the velocity up on my kick so it's quite a heavy, quite a heavy kick. When it comes to the hi-hats, I think it's best that the hi-hat on the kick is the strongest of all four. And then second to that would be the one above the snare. Actually, we're gonna keep it at 98 because the other four, the ones in between, are gonna be slightly lighter. And I actually think that the last one in the order should be the lightest. So now you see, it sounds a little something like this. Now there's a little bit more character, a little bit more flow there. That's not the whole thing, but that starts to make it sound a little more realistic in how a normal instrumentalist, normal instrumentalist would play the instrument. Uh, so that's how I do drums. Next, on to the bass, so how I'm, I would do bass, so we're not actually working with a with one rhythmic bass here um, and the rest of it's synth bass, so there's not going to be as much programming on the synth bass but with the bass, again, the first beat at the bar will be the strongest, so we'll turn all four of them up and here we have a little bit of a build up on this bar 13 uh, I like to when I do build ups is actually to have the velocity build up with it, normally up in about intervals of five. So the first one I'm working with is 80. So go from 80 up to 85, 85 to 90, 95, and so on. So Uh, 
And there you have it. Now we've got a build up on the bass. So it sounds like this. So it just allows for that instrument to build up a little further. Sounds a bit like this. So that's really important with the bass. So I'm going to now go away, I'm going to program the entire bass, the entire drums, and I'll come back and show you how it looks afterwards. So that, I've just finished programming the drums, and I've decided to not program the synth bass, the synth I'm using doesn't account for velocity. But I thought it would be best to show you what a programmed drum actually looks like. It, like this. Uh, basically a rainbow of colours, mainly in the orange, red and green. Uh, and this sounds, you know, it's still quite consistent, still a little bit uh, without the randomness, but these are a lot taking more into account uh, what hands play what and what feet play what and stuff like that. And it definitely starts to sound a lot more realistic to a player. We'll come back to some of the things that I'll, I do that add some of that randomness, add some of that human element a little later. Like I said, I didn't program the synth bass in the end, but I will show you what a program bass looks like. This is Bird Fly Away, so I've already, I've already shown you. And this is what the bass programmed looks a little like. Again, loads and loads of different colours. Uh, and this is, I've taken into account, like I said, about the first, third, uh, and the second and fourth. So my first beat is the hardest, then it's my third in order, and then second and my lightest is my fourth. We've also got some articulations down here. So there's some this articulation, the F0 adds a slide to it. Uh, and then there's this, these are palm muted, this is open. Uh, and this adds for more variety through the song. So we say that. And then here, so here we're back to the File. So, next thing I do after I've done the drums and the bass is I move on to the piano. So now, I've already split the piano between left hand and right hand. I prefer to do this because often the rules are invert. So, with the right hand, you're considering that your thumb is the hardest, uh, which would be the first note of a chord often, unless you're playing the inverted chords. Your middle finger and then your pinky finger, whereas the other way, your first note will be played with your pinky and therefore be the lightest. And I prefer to do that when programming. Uh, just so I remember to invert my rules. I also think it's great in the mixing stage, and I'll come back to that another time. Again, with more rhythmic parts, I'm treating it again with the first notes the hardest, then the third, then the second, then the fourth, unless there's a build up, which is then it gets stronger as we go. But like I said, I spoke about how this is the right hand, so this hand here. Um, and so when building chords, I like to treat my right, my Thumb is the hardest, so that's the first note of the chords. These are all basic chords, and so I will turn them up. I consider the pinky to be the lightest, so I will turn them all down a little bit. And I'm going to keep the middle finger the same here it's at 80, which is roughly about the middle ground between the two, uh, as that is the middle strength. Uh, and then for the low notes, that's again, that's the opposite. So instead of uh, the first note's going to be the lightest and the fifth note's going to be the hardest. And because that's because we're playing in fifths here. So we'll turn this down quite a bit more and turn these up. Now these were just single notes. I consider it played with my index or uh, middle finger and so they would be relatively consistent. As there's no rhythmic element here, I'm just going to keep that the same. Uh, for rhythmic part like the end of here, there'll be a little bit more uh, to take into account in terms of beats on the bar. So I will go and program that uh, and I'll come back and show you what I've done afterwards. And so I'm back again uh, with the pianos now programmed. I'll show you what they look like. This is the right hand. So it looks a little something like that. You can't quite, you can sort of get it in on one screen there. One thing that's quite interesting that I decided to do as some of my chords come in off the beats I decided to make these ones a lot lighter than the ones that are on the beat, just to keep uh, the sort of rhythm going. Uh, this here is my left hand. So again, that's the low end stuff. 
And yeah, so that's the piano there. So next on the list is going to be the guitar. Now in this song, the guitar is a little simpler. Um, I won't be doing any personal uh, programming on this telechords one because the uh, VST doesn't get controlled by velocity. It does get controlled by some of the parameter controls, which are down here, which control the, sort of the chord types, a so major, minor, seventh, etc. chord play, and that's the only programming that I will be doing with this one. However, with the Les Paul rhythm guitar, it does get controlled by velocity. So the lower the velocity, the more muted the sound is, the higher the velocity, the more open the sound is. So for some of the more the chorus, all of it's in red. All of it is very loud and it's very open, but there are some still, still some rhythmic tracks here, as you can see all across. Uh, and I will follow the same rule that I followed with everything else on this, where we start building up from a low velocity to a high velocity in these build-ups. In these sections where they're more rhythmic and they actually are played in the bar, I will also continue with the one, uh, one, three, two, four in order of importance. However, for these instruments that come in off the bar, the first note will be the strongest, not the second one, as in this case, uh, which is on the official bar. So I'll do that quickly and I'll show you what I've done. Uh, so I'll see you in a second. So it didn't take too long, but I'm now back here with my rhythm guitar programmed. Uh, so I'll show you a little bit of just the normal rhythm section on the chuck. Sounds a little something like this. So you can see every note is slightly different uh, and has slightly more of a groove to it. So yeah, that's all the ry rhythmic instruments and often these are the ones where you program all of these, you definitely have a much more realistic sounding song. Um, the last stage of this, I spoke about the human element. Now this is, yes, there's some um, taking un understanding of your know, right, right and your left hand and your fingers and all that stuff. But humans are often a little more random uh, and often not always uh, perfect as well. So there's two things that we can do to really remove the perfection and make it a little more imperfect. Uh, there's two tools. Now, I could do these two things uh, manually. I could spend hours and hours and hours slaving over this, but I think you can get the same effect through two automatic tools. The first one is in the quantizing section. You can quantize it to a swing. This sort of takes it slightly off the beat. Not completely. The heavier you go, the more off the beat it is. For me, for things like com complex instruments, uh, I will use a slightly higher swing. For slightly less complex instruments like the piano or the bass, I might have a slightly lower swing. The other thing we can do, so keep it, this is the color scheme for the drums here, is we can use a tool called MIDI Transform Humanize looks a little something like this. So we're going to shut off the position and we're going to shut off the length and we're going to be stuck with the random velocity tool. Now we bring down the velocity randomness down quite a bit so there isn't, the randomness isn't obvious but will create that feel of groove. So again, for something that's quite complex I'll go for a sort of a three or four and it looks a little something like this. So now you can see that the notes are subtly different from each other now. Wait, I'll just scroll a little bit. So there's a 98, 99, 97. So even though it's not tons random, it should give a more human element to it. And also with the swing, I'll show you that as well. It doesn't actually do much visually. We'll go for a swing C, quantize it. Uh, but it does move some things slightly out of the way. You can just see with that note there, it's not quite on the bar. So that's something that can really help humanise, dare I say, uh, elements of the song uh, and bring a more natural feel to it, a more realistic feel to it. Now I don't do that with the strings, with the strings the whole programming is a very different thing, it takes a bit of setup. so I'm going to go set that up and once that's set up I'll come back and I'll show you the real basics of programming that orchestra. And last but certainly not least, we're moving on to programming the strings. Now for this song there is just the cello in the opening section. I think this is the best way to show you how I put how I program strings. Now I'm using a plugin here called Audio Swift, which allows me to use my trackpad 
to manipulate uh, some parameters inside plugins. Now we're going to be controlling the expression dynamics here uh, and to try and emulate live play and we're going to bring the notes in slowly up to the top and then out slowly again. This hope for this, you know, in practice might sound a bit strange actually when you, you get to the sound at the end it sounds very realistic. Uh, we're actually going to play it in live so we, we, for some of the longer songs where the strings are in the whole song I'm playing it for the whole three minutes. We only have to do it for eight bars here. I might, I might have to do two takes, but this is how it should go. Okay, and it does a little something like that. I was a bit sloppy, but when I switch this all off and I open up my automation, you see you start to get this curve here brings notes in slowly and out slowly. So what we'll do, now we've played it live and now we have a very natural feeling, we're going to clean it up uh, and make sure it sounds absolutely perfect. So some of these high notes we're just going to curve off uh, as well as some of the dips in the expression we're going to bring that up. So I'll get that done and I'll come back and show you what I've done. So that's done now. You actually see these black lines Showing up, this is the automation that is being completed. So, just cleaned up the expression a little bit, uh, and this is just has a much better curve to it. Same with the uh, dynamics here. I've just cleaned it up a little bit. It sounds a little something like this. Yeah, as you can hear, it comes in quite slowly and out slowly. It's very subtle at the end of the day, but with every instrument laying on top of each other, a small change can make a really big difference. So that's it then. That is the whole project now, the whole song now programmed. Uh, everything from the guitars to the drums, the strings. Um, all of these program tracks will go on my SoundCloud where the demos currently are, uh, the demos will still remain there, just to keep showing that work in progress. So if you like what you saw today, like we saw in this video, please like, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Uh, and for everybody else, I'll see you next time. Peace out.